favorite time of year winter time it's hard to find people this time of year because they think the ducks leave the pond really our bit of paradise is much too big to freeze over we're here 365 i've been here since the beginning since its creation its inception into thought when olmsted met vox and the new york city parks commissioner approved their plan to evict thousands of farmers from their homes and build what a home for little old me <laughs> I'll tell you, I was flattered, but ultimately unimpressed. The wiles and interests of men remain flexible as the reeds. If they were so changeable as to dishouse their own kind, I figured it would only be a matter of time before they tried to cast me out. I was not worried by this prospect, however. I continued to be unbothered by the face of certain demise because I've stared it down before, nearly every day of my young life. Did you know? Mother ducks will not tolerate the presence of foreign creatures around their young. This was how I came into this world, hatched to see my mother, the protector, doing as her name described. I had brothers and sisters, I think, but they were weak. And my mother tolerated weakness even less than otherness, something she must have found contemptible that one of her own kind, no less her own brood, could not stand up to the rigors of a modern life for a duck. She made sure that those that grew, grew up strong. Yet there was always a certain ineffable kindness to her actions. Ineffable yet subtle, like the air we breathe, the sun in the sky, the great vastness of space that surrounds us at all times. Something clearly demonstrated yet never quite identified. Known. She would lead us through hunting grounds knowing she was the only one in danger. It added an an indomitable metal to the soul. Not all survived, of course. Very few did. Even as she was on the lookout, protecting us from swans and geese and other creatures, webbed afoot but boorish in nature, some of my siblings fell behind. She kept a very quick pace, always moving, roving, looking for the next soft place to land. Lead-footedness was intolerable. In a strange twist of fate, now ground myself, what I used to perceive as cruelty, I realized was now no more than a mere byproduct of her own necessary. Spending a majority of her childhood in the real wild woods, not these pedestrian hamlets and farmlands we had the pleasure of calling home. Still, it was no walk in the park, quite literally. A whole myriad of dangers continued to lurk behind the thin veneer of what man deemed civilized society. As my mother learned one foggy and forlorn springtime evening, Gosh, I'm hungry. What I wouldn't give for the littlest bit of bread, sourdough, rye, pumpernickel, nine grain, a whole grain. Ugh, I'm so ravenous. I'd even settle for wonder at this point in time, though it does leave me bloated. Not to say I don't have some. Any duck worth her feathers always has a secret stash for when the end times approach. I think I'm just fine for now. Peachy, really. Though I do wish a bird lady or a little old man or a small child with their nanny would come by picking away at the loaf crumb by crumb. <laughs> I suppose I could use a little snack to hold me over. We're really an important part of the ecosystem in that regard. With no ducks, the entire park would be overrun run with snails and frogs, crayfish and salamanders, all kinds of unsavory fauna that would not make for an enjoyable picnic with the family. Oh no. In that sense, snacking between meals is my sacred duty to my lifelong adult home. The currency-free rent I pay vis-a-vis -vis my watery abode. Then again... No, what a preposterous proposition. I've not gone a day in my life feasting on those vile things with their unsightly innards. I'd be sure to make a mess of my own down coat. I've never liked the idea, and I'm currently not going to start now. Surely, a good Samaritan will come by with, with a suitable substance in all due time. In due time. Besides, who am I to decide who's to live or die? Who is allowed and barred from taking up residence in a purely public space of engagement? How does that make me any better than the men who tore down barns and shacks to put up benches and lampposts? Perish the thought, a ridiculous notion. But again, I suppose it is the natural order of things. On the spring solstice, when I was a duckling not ten days old, my one remaining sibling died. That morning, I cried and cried, but my mother would have none of it. 
Sentiment is too great a burden to carry, she used to say, at least where we're going. It's all I was thinking about all day. All I could wrap my brain around was how I'd gone from duckling to duck in all but appearance in a matter of a week and a half. How I felt I had nothing, nothing at all left for me. Oh, how wrong I was. We settled in a pumpkin patch for the night, the farmer and his wife in bed long before we watched them shutter their blinds and snuff their lamps from a distance hours before. I made my bed for the night. My mother made hers. A stranger approached us, like no stranger I'd ever encountered before, twice as big as a full-grown mallard with fangs and a growl to match. I was sure we took a wrong turn into hell. I later discovered it was the old farmer's hunting dog, but he was trained to recognize a sitting duck no matter the season. And knowing my mother, she found heaven between the jaws of that basset hound. By the grace of God, I found salvation under a pumpkin leaf. Or, I don't know, maybe that dog was a mother too. <sighs> oh, I wish the humans would show up already. I know they're coming, but honestly, just get on with it. Hungry birds are waiting. Maybe I could... Just a look. For now. To make sure it's there. Make sure it's safe. I couldn't even bear the thought of being separated from my precious bagel, even for a second. I'll just... There. No need to worry any longer, Gear. Dear mommy, will keep an eye on you. So began my life on the run. As an orphan, I had no idea who I was, what I was meant to be, or where to go. My mother had always laid the path. I was merely a follower. But suddenly, at a newly hatched 11 days old, I had leadership thrust upon me. I must have wandered aimlessly the first few weeks. My main point of concern was maintaining a wide berth around farms, silos, and any other man-made structure that could secretly harbor canine terrors my childhood mind could only begin to fathom. I tried falling in line with others of my kind, those of a certain ilk and caliber I thought myself fit to feign to perfection, but once an outcast, always an outcast. To other duck mothers, I was not only a stranger, but a direct threat to their offspring and subsequent lineage. They attacked me with the same ferocity I thought made my own mother special. It was in this time I must have learned my greatest lesson. If you think anyone is unique, you just haven't met that many creatures. Naivete is a weakness, one I quickly learned to shed as I came head to head with the horrifying realization that I would be forever wandering. A nomad, refugee from another place and time entirely. As others my age began to molt and grow, I remained in the same fuzzy body that my siblings occupied when they met their demise. Though my figure was small, my mind grew large and strong to compensate. Like a steel trap, there I learned the second greatest lesson of my life. Out of cunning or strength, I'll always take the former. For the latter, I can do without. As I grew and didn't grow, cold and hard and mean, I came to terms with the fact that I would be homeless for the rest of my infinity, infinitely prepubescent days. And then it happened. Mere days after the summer solstice, I found it. This place newly erected, a monument of nature to the wonders of industry, of mankind, my home where I grew into my own. In the early days of the park, I missed my mother. I couldn't help but feel guilt in every ease and kindness I was afforded, knowing she had never had the same. Even growing into my own body, I was racked with shame, with, with the shame of growing into the form, the very picture of my dear old dead mom. As I spent more time living in a dream, I was convinced it was a nightmare of my own design. Maybe the hunting hound had done me in, and this was a special level of hell, conceived just for me, made to torture my soul for all eternity, for sin not yet made known to my innocent mind. What kind of God would take from the strong and give to such an undeserving, lowly waterfowl as myself? For the longest time, I carried on like this, bearing the unbearable with the enormous conviction that this was all a mistake— and that I, a chosen subject, was nothing more than an ignorant fraud. Even worse, a fraud who knew of her deception but couldn't make public what atrocities had led her through the gates of Eden. I was convinced I was meant to live and die miserable. But then I woke up one morning, realizing, like a blind prisoner, I might have been holding the key to my own salvation all along. My mother wouldn't have been able to stand this place. She was too old, too stagnant stuck in her ways to enjoy the comfort of a permanent home, to indulge in the company of other neighbors, too proud to eat bread off the floor, bread she didn't have to fight for, forage or steal, bread that was literally handed to her from those of a higher order of thinking. 
not just any bread too. Breads the likes of which we'd never borne witness to. Thick breads, thin breads, breads of every, every hue and texture imaginable, even sweet bread, literally scattered about the feet of those monolithic godlike beings who were considerate enough to extend some small crumbs of kindness to the rest of the world as some sort of penance for disrupting the balance. But who gives a damn when you reap the benefits of all the bread? Bre- bread! Did I? Is that it? I could have sworn there was more. My mother was not built for this world. She was built for an old order where strength and, and discipline reigned supreme. I was built in her image, but not made in it. I shed that part of me. I adapted to the new regime that quickly overtook her ancient world, one of community. In the spring, I was forged anew. And yet I still wonder. It's been all four seasons since I've seen the humans last. I'd so go so far as to say that was the last bit of bread in the confines of the park. No matter. There's not been a dearth before, and there certainly shan't be now. Not on my account. I'll just sit here, as I want to, and they will come. After winter, they will come, as they always have before.